What's going on? Vincent Rapsardi, BlueUnders.com. In this video, I want to talk about Ross Cockrell, some of the young pieces in the Giants secondary, and of course, DeAndre Baker. So let's start with Ross Cockrell. The Giants have signed him. I think that this is a great deal. I have been talking about this since March. I said the Giants should go out and sign Ross Cockrell. He's going to cost them virtually nothing. He's a veteran piece. He's productive. Why not do it, especially with a lot of young players in that secondary? So they've signed Ross Cockrell. Last year, he started 11 games for Carolina. He played opposite James Bradbury. Interesting. Both will be now be playing with the Giants, um, starting with the Giants. Most likely, uh, it looks like Ross Cockrell will be starting opposite James Bradbury. But last year, Cockrell started 11 games. Completion percentage around 55%. Passer rating around 68. Only allowed one touchdown. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for a player that you sign here in August who is going to fit right in and basically be a starter. I would take that on my team, paying him virtually nothing. And I think that's the interesting part here is Ross Cockrell's not getting this big contract where all of a sudden you can't play Julian Love or you can't play Darnay Holmes starting at an outside corner spot. If you need to replace Ross Cockrell or if you want to give Love or Holmes time, you can easily do it because Cockrell is not holding you back because of his contract. Whereas Janoris Jenkins got paid a lot of money last year, and if you wanted to get some of your young cornerbacks reps, it's a little bit tough. You're paying Janoris Jenkins a lot of money to be a starting corner. Complete opposite with Cockrell. I mean, if the Giants want to move him down their depth chart at some point in the season, even if he's performing fairly well, they can do that, right, to give younger players more experience. So that's the interesting part for those young players. If we talk about those young players, Love, Holmes, all of a sudden it puts them in a good spot because they're not forced into a position where, ooh, okay, DeAndre Baker's not playing. Sam Beal just opted out. Well, Julian Love, you got to go start uh, on the outside. Now you got to, and that might hurt his development, right? Because he would be forced to do it basically in, a, in an emergency situation. Same thing with Darnay Holmes. I think most are, most are probably predicting him to be a nickel corner. So to all of a sudden say, oh, DeAndre, uh, Dar Darnay Holmes, you're not ready, but we need you there because we got nobody else player opted out, situation with DeAndre Baker. So this signing is really, really good news for, for the development of those players, that they're not going to be forced into those situations. Now, if the Giants feel like at some point during the season, Love or Holmes can step up and be starters at those spots, then that's good for them. But at least they're not forced because of this crazy situation that's going on. So let's talk about DeAndre Baker. I said this months ago when this first happened. I said, uh, and you can go watch the YouTube video. I'm going to put it in the description below. I told you guys the Giants were done. The Giants were done with DeAndre Baker. And the reason I said that was because they didn't include him in their virtual team meeting. And at the time, I tweeted it out. I talked about it in a YouTube video. And people were like, that's so stupid. Like, Just because he wasn't included in a virtual team meeting, that doesn't mean anything. I said, yes, it does. It goes to show that they've already moved on. In a nice way, they've said they've already moved on. They didn't cut him because it's really not the right thing to do. You have to let the legal process uh, play out. He's also a first-round pick, so it's kind of tough to just straight-up cut him. But I think at that point, they were just kind of like, all right, we're kind of just done with you. Now, if something extraordinary happens and he turns out to be completely um, innocent and whatever, fair enough, they would still have him on the roster, They then they're good. But I think that they kind of said, all right, we're, we're, we're kind of moving on from him. We don't expect him to be on the Giants, so he's not going to be included right now in our plans. And, you know, there's a difference between showing up to practice in East Rutherford, New Jersey, as opposed to downloading an app on your phone and talking to your new coaches and some new teammates on your phone, on a Zoom app, Right. It's pretty easy to do that, right? You just download and, hey, coach, hey, teammate, pretty easy to do that as opposed to, you know, maybe he couldn't travel all the way up to New Jersey and practice. You got to also understand he's a young player. He's a young player who struggled last year. He played better at the end of the year, but he's still a young player who had a tough season in general. New head coach, new defensive coordinator, new position coaches. Um, you need him to build chemistry with those people. You need him to be in those virtual team meetings. You need as many meetings as possible um, with a young player who at times also apparently fell asleep in meetings. Um, so he kind of had his troubles there, not only just on the field with new coaches and some new teammates. You need him to be a part of that. So when you send the message that 
we're not going to include you in those meetings. Sorry. I think that was a nice way of the Giants saying, we kind of moved on from you. Um, and it kind of looks like that. I think that I think he, his Giants career pretty much looks over at this point. It really does. And I also talked about this. Another reason why the Giants kind of had to move on from DeAndre Baker, this was the first real test for Joe Judge. This really was because the Giants had Ben McAdoo. They had Pat Shermer. Those guys were X's and O's guys. They weren't really known to be those old school football coach, grab you by the face mask and say, all right, you know, this is this is rough and tough football and we're going to build a culture and we're going to be tough. And, you know, those guys, McAdoo, Shermer, weren't really known to be those types of guys. Joe Judge is, okay? This is a, this is a completely different direction they're going with the hire of Joe Judge. This is a culture building move. Complete culture building move. So... When you have a situation like this where, in a way, you can make an example of the situation like, look, we're not going to deal with this. Okay, this is a new era of Giants football. We're, you know, the Giants, I, I feel like they're saying that, right? I feel like what they've already done, the actions that they've shown in this in this process, they basically said, and even with Aldrich, Ro- Aldrich Rosas being uh, released, they basically said, this is, a, this is a new era of Giants football. This isn't the McAdoo era. This isn't the Shermer era. This is... We're gonna build. We're gonna build a strong culture. Even if you're a first round pick, DeAndre Baker, or you're a Pro Bowl kicker, Aldrich Rosas, we don't care. Okay, we have standards, and we want to keep those standards no matter where you came from. First round, Pro Bowl, this and that doesn't matter. Whatever trade, it doesn't matter. And especially, you have to consider this too. The Giants got rid of Janoris Jenkins, who is a productive NFL player, very productive. You look at the advanced metrics, still a very good corner in the NFL. They got rid of him because of a tweet, okay? They got rid of him because of a tweet, and they didn't trade him. They literally just, like, waived him, okay? They released him. They got rid of him. They didn't care for him. What message would you send if this whole thing seems to be true with DeAndre Baker and he's allowed to play football, let's just say, and you kept him? You're not sending a great message. You're really not. Because now you're being a little bit hypocritical. You're basically saying in a nice way, well, if you're a Dave Gettleman draft pick, a first round pick, you you know, you get a little more leeway because, you know, we picked you. That would be a terrible look on the Giants and their current regime. And this is an interesting thing too, is if you go back uh, a few years, um, I, I remember writing about this, I remember talking about this, and Mark Hersley came out and said, you know, after the fact, that during the twenty sixteen season Odell Beckham was a distraction. He used that word. And then he said in twenty seventeen when they suspended Dominique Rogers Cromartie, but they really never did anything to Odell Beckham for any of the things that he did, he literally said, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, it just sent a bad message to the team that, okay, if you're a certain caliber of player, you can get away with anything. And if, you know, maybe you're a veteran who's going to get cut next year, like DRC or, you know, not re-signed or whatever it might be, a veteran that's not going to be on the team in the, moving forward and really doesn't have much value beyond that season or a young player who's going to get cut, or whatever it might be. Someone who doesn't have value long-term for the organization. That, okay, you know, you'll, we'll penalize you, but we won't penalize the star player because we need him. And Mark Herzlick said that had an effect on the team because it was a clear double standard. So this era of Giants football, Dave Gettleman is already getting rid of Norris Jenkins because of a tweet. He set the standard, right? He set the standard that it's about culture. That standard, it needs to be kept with DeAndre Baker. They have to move on from it. They have to, or else, what does it mean? What does this whole culture thing even mean for the Giants? So that's all I got. Vincent Rapsardi, Big Blue Unbiased.com. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at Vince Rapsardi. I have a podcast, the Big Blue Unbiased Podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those other platforms. And uh, that's really it. Thanks again for watching. Vincent Rapsardi, Big Blue Unbiased.com.